I've always been fascinated with what things were made of, how they were made, and how that reflected in their properties. My career has been focused on, if you like, the interface between dissimilar substances, organic and inorganic, organic and metal, and a curiosity of how that uh, produces unusual properties by, by making them. I'm fascinated in particular if they've never been made before, understanding their properties, uh, understanding the implications of their properties, and ultimately to do something that is, is useful in, in the service of humanity. So one aspect of my career has been a fascination and the challenge of using catalysts to create unusual kinds of materials. And sometimes the, the catalyst is just as unusual as the material. It has to have very special properties to have, for example, very high activity, but also very selective. If I think of ethylene as the, small, as the simplest um, organic molecule with a carbon-carbon double bond, so CH2, double bond, CH2, uh, it's very, very abundant. It can be made from natural gas. You're going to see it's going to be very abundant, especially with the advent of sh the abundance of shale gas. Uh, it produces, then those molecules can be linked up to, to produce what is a satu essentially we call a saturated hydrocarbon. It can be a paraffin. A paraffin is an example of a polyolefin. But by putting branching on the chains, by elongating the chains, by incorporating other substances, molecules in the branches, we can make, uh, for example, structures where the branches entangle so that you have a material that is very, very hard to pull apart, but can be very thin and very, very lightweight. I'll, I'll never forget, the student who did this was a, a very talented young man named Shi Ming Yang, and it was on a Saturday. And I said, I suggested, let's take this borane molecule and react it with one of our organometallics, and we follow the reaction by a, a spectroscopic technique called NMR spectroscopy. He brought me, like, you know, an hour later, the spectrum, and I looked at it, my like, gosh, you mean, this looks like just what we've been looking for. And, and his eyes lit up, and my eyes lit up, and then I said, uh, let's react that same solution, let's add a little bit of ethylene, and, and see if anything happens. You know, we'll take the NMR spectrum and see if anything at all happens. Shi Min Yang. And I heard his footsteps go down the hall back to the lab, and maybe 10 minutes goes by, 20 minutes, and I hear footsteps running toward my office. And he's holding the NMR tube, and it's completely filled with polyethylene. So it had polymerized at a very rapid rate. And it's a long story short, but then that led to a partnership with Dow Chemical, and within an amazingly short time, they took the chemistry and we followed, we worked with them to go from that little, you know, benchtop reaction to, you know, a, to a scale up in their labs in a mini plant, in a pilot plant, and it was just, wow. <laughs> I mean, it's a great feeling. That there's something in science that it's hard to replace with any uh, other experience, or at least for, for scientists, no matter all the theory and all the classrooms and all you do, all of a sudden there are times when a light, a light bulb goes off, in this case a, a catalyst went off as well, and, and it's like, you know, your idea really worked. And I always tell my students, maybe once in every one scientific career there's one of those moments like that, and for goodness sake, don't throw the peachy dish in the waste in the, you know, the chemical waste without wondering why is that? What are the implications of that?